it is a necessity. No operator should get into the seat without a capacity chart, but it is not a mystery. So operators and supervisors should study and understand it before they plan a lift or pull a lever. This presentation is designed primarily to help the contractor, his supervisors, and the crane operator. Knowledge regarding capacity charts and lifts is more vital today than ever before because of sophisticated machinery brought about by advanced technology and the need for lifting heavier and heavier loads, higher and higher, farther and farther out. No longer can we live with seat-of-the-pants crane operation. The big lifts, which were rare in the past, are common today, hence the need for better planning and better trained operational personnel. Every lift should be planned, pre-engineered. First, make sure your crane is ready, structurally competent, operating right, and the controls tested. Just as every pilot must make a walk-around inspection of his airplane before liftoff, so should the crane operator make an inspection of his rig before startup. Every operator must have the right capacity chart for that crane and its boom configuration. And just as important, the supporting area for the crane must be level and solid enough to support the crane, the load, and the reactions resulting from the lift. Don't guess about ground support. More accidents are caused by poor ground support than any other error. You may need mats or special base preparation, or you may need to call in a professional. The Manitowoc Technical Services Department will gladly work with them or with you on ground bearing requirements. And up for generalities, let's look at a Manitowoc lift crane capacity chart and range chart. Both are needed to plan a lift, and both must be understood, followed, and kept readily available for reference at all times, within easy reach of the crane operator. Now let's study a typical Manitowoc capacity chart, section by section. First, the chart heading should be checked to make certain that you have the right chart for the crane and boom you are about to use. Manitowoc puts this vital data right at the top of its charts in bold type so you can't miss it. And also repeats this information in greater detail under the heading Machine Equipment. If your crane isn't equipped exactly as stated, then you have the wrong chart or the wrong equipment for the job at hand. But use care. There are hundreds of different charts and only one is correct for your crane. Remember, you are not safe in using a chart just because the model number and boom number on it are the ones you are using. You need to know about and compare your crane to the chart heading on the counterweight, the gantry, the boom type and configuration, the type and size of pendants, and the number of parts of boom hoist line. Your manual will help you. It tells you by number what chart your specific serial number had at manufacture. And so will the builder's plate in the operator's cab. In fact, the only capacity charts you should use in making a lift are those on which Manitowoc has stamped the serial number of your crane. Of next importance is the first section of the chart, headed lifting capacities which explains exactly what the various capacities shown are based upon. These capacities are for freely suspended loads, loads hanging directly below the boom point, without side pull and without assist or support from any other means. Remember, multi-machine lifts can involve side loads and, if made at all, must be made with extreme caution. Capacities do not exceed 75% of static tipping loads on crawlers, 85% on truck cranes. Again, follow the chart rather than the seat of your pants. At certain boom angles, some cranes are so stable that they will not tip until overloading causes the boom or some other part of the crane to collapse. Let's say it once more. With modern, sophisticated cranes, the operator cannot tell by the feel of the machine whether he is in trouble 
until it's too late. First, a crane can be overloaded before any signs of tipping are evident. Second, a crane can go from a stable condition to one that is unstable with no marked change in the operator's perception of the crane's condition. Capacity charts have certain areas which are shaded in gray or indicated by asterisks. Under these conditions, the capacity of the crane is limited by the strength of various structural components, such as the rotating bed, hook roller hangers, gantry, rigging components, or boom. Capacities that have a suffix B indicate boom positions that may provide less than standard backward stability without load and with the crawlers retracted. The next paragraph in this section is very important in computing a lift. Remember, you must include the weight of the jib, load block, hook, weight ball, slings, and other rigging as part of the load. Additional items affecting the load weight computation are also listed on each capacity chart. For example, note that on this crane, you must also deduct 1,200 pounds from the capacities listed when a single shiv upper boom point is attached and 1,500 pounds when a two shiv upper boom point is attached. Note also that the boom is not to be lowered beyond radii where combined weights are greater than the rated capacity and that where no capacity is shown, operation is not intended or approved. Let's say it another way. The capacities listed in the load chart are not the loads that can be suspended from the hook. All these things are part of the load and must be added to the weight of the item being lifted. Special note should be given to chart A, which shows the weight that must be deducted from the main fall capacities when a jib is attached. In this case, the jib is considered part of the load. Now that we've discussed general procedures for computing a crane's lifting capabilities, the next step is checking on operating conditions. For example, will the surface supporting the crane also support the reactions resulting from the lift? And just as important, is the crane level? If the crane is not level, boom side loads will result. And it takes as little as 2% off level to increase the stress in a boom cord by as much as 70%. Levels are provided on each crane for a constant visual check. And remember, the longer the boom, the more critical side loading becomes if the crane is off level. This is another reason the ground bearing area must be stable to keep the machine level. Levels on the machine should be checked regularly particularly in times of ground variation such as spring thaw. The boom must be rigged in accordance with the boom rigging drawing and charts specified in the operating conditions section of the capacity chart on your crane. Regular checking of ground support is only one rule of several that involve crane operator judgment. The operator's judgment must allow for the dynamic load effects of swinging, hoisting, lowering, and traveling. Adverse operating conditions and physical machine depreciation. Remember, the capacity chart is based upon the performance of a new machine, and a machine is new only until it is used. If everything is done by the book, but you still have a seat of the pants or gut feeling that something's not right, back off and check. Moving on, the next section defines operating radius which is the horizontal distance from the axis of rotation to center of the vertical hoist line or load block with the load freely suspended. Here again, loose eyeball judgment must give way to accurate measurement with a tape measure. The boom angle indicator is only a guide. It is not precise enough to give accurate radius readings for full capacity lifts. As an example, Misreading by only one degree could mean an error of three to five feet in some areas of the chart, and that could change the rating by several thousand pounds. Measure from the boom hinge to the center of the load line. Then check the crane's outline dimension drawing for the exact measurement from the boom hinge to the center line of rotation. Another important consideration prior to making a lift 
is a study of the hoist reading for the main load block chart and the load and whip line specifications chart. Load line information is furnished in your manual. Keep in mind that all capacities on each lift chart are based upon the rope strength and specifications outlined on this chart and that the maximum loads indicated must not be exceeded. This section of the lift capacity chart must be studied when jibs are used, noting the maximum jib and boom lengths that can be lifted over the front and side. Separate jib capacity charts are supplied for the various jib lengths and boom and jib combinations available. Truck crane ratings have a special factor for you to consider. Added capacity is available because of the greater stability that a truck crane has when lifting over the rear. Therefore, most manufacturers show separate ratings for lifting over the rear and over the side. In many cases, lifting over the front is not permitted, or only with greatly reduced ratings. Separate charts are provided for each sector or quadrant. The areas to which each chart is suitable are described in the chart. But to be sure you understand clearly, an operating range diagram is frequently provided. Use caution to be sure you do understand these operating ranges because they are not the same for all models. And other manufacturers sometimes have their own definitions. In cases where the load is lifted over the rear, for instance, and placed over the side, both charts must be checked. Use the lesser of the two capacities for your maximum rating. And for all truck crane charts, on outriggers means this, wheels off the ground, and all outriggers fully extended. One final caution. There are special charts for other types of work and for special crane configurations. These include clam or grapple work, magnet work, and other applications in which you must remove counterweight. Also, barge-mounted cranes usually have reduced ratings, whereas pedestal mounts may qualify for higher ratings. Be sure to consult Manitowoc about these special ratings and limits. While Manitowoc provides range diagrams for various boom and jib arrangements in a size to fit instruction and reference manuals, lifts should be planned using larger blueprint range diagrams available from your Manitowoc dealer. Obviously, the larger the diagram, the more accurate the pre-engineered lift. Now that we've discussed the content of a Manitowoc capacity chart, let's follow through a typical example. Assume that you are the operator on a Manitowoc 4100W lift crane, equipped with 240 feet of number 22C boom, with an inline open throw top and a 30 foot number 123 jib. You're working with the crawlers extended and plan to lift a 50,000 pound load on the lower boom point. Knowing this, determine the total load to be lifted and the maximum radius at which the lift could be made. Remember, the capacity shown in the chart is not the weight that can be suspended from the hook, but the total load at the boom top. In this example, we must include the weight of the jib, which is 3,000 pounds. This figure is obtained from table A in the capacity chart. The wire rope beneath the jib point, which is 23 pounds. To obtain this, assume that the weight ball is 10 feet below the jib point. Multiply this by the weight per foot of the rope, which is also listed in the capacity chart. The hook and weight ball on the jib line, which is 900 pounds. The wire rope beneath the main fall, which is 1,123 pounds. This is determined by multiplying the boom length by the parts of line and the weight per foot of the load line. The main load block, which is 4,740 pounds. The slings and other rigging, weighing 700 pounds. And the weight of the load, which is 50,000 pounds. The total weight is the combined weight of all these components, in this case, 60,486 pounds. With this figure, we can go to the crane capacity chart and look under the section for 240 feet of boom. In the 